Welcome to the Texas Cannabis Collective weekly update for the week of May 28th, 2022. I'm Jesse Williams. Lone Star Collective and Texas Cannabis Collective updates are sponsored by Thrive Apothecary. Thrive Apothecary is doctor approved CBD. Thrive also provides cannabis clinician appointments. For more information, visit thrivetx.com. Support also comes from Oak Cliff Cultivators. Oak Cliff focuses on quality assurance with their hemp products. For more information, visit oakcliffcultivators.com. And the VET Coalition. VET is Veterans Educating Texas. VET Coalition is Veterans of Texas leading the fight against cannabis prohibition by educating the Lone Star State. For more information on the organization or how to become a Texas Compassionate Youth Patient, visit txvetco.org, texasvetco.org. This week, Ground Game Texas announced that it had enough signatures to put decriminalization efforts on another ballot. This time, the city is Killeen, Texas, which is located in the central Texas region next to Fort Hood. Director Mike Siegel announced that more than 2,400 signatures and 1,400 have been pre-verified signing for the initiative. In a quickly growing and thriving community like Killeen, there's no excuse for the continued over-policing and incarceration of community members for marijuana use, said Julie Oliver, executive director of Ground Game Texas in a press release. The Colleen Ordinance would officially codify city policy so that police can no longer issue citations or make arrests for Class A and B misdemeanor marijuana possession offenses, with exceptions such as if the violation is connected to an investigation into a felony-level narcotics case. Also, the measure says police cannot issue citations for residue or paraphernalia in lieu of a possession charge, and they cannot use the odor of cannabis alone as probable cause for a search or seizure. It has become the practice of some departments to issue a Class C misdemeanor charge for paraphernalia when a possession charge would typically be aligned for the situation. Officers have used this method as a means of justifying not decriminalizing cannabis at a state level and keeping sight and release at bay during legislative sessions. The Oklahoma State Commissioner of Health issued an emergency order Friday temporarily suspending a medical marijuana testing laboratory's license in connection with alleged Oklahoma Medical Marijuana Authority rules violations. OMMA issued a recall Friday for 99 medical marijuana products related to the lab's alleged rules violations. Commissioner Keith Reed's emergency order immediately suspended the medical marijuana business license for Scale Laboratories in Oklahoma City. Scale is the trade name for Shiv Krupa LLC OMMA license number LAAA C8NH. JZ02. According to the order, the Laboratory 1 reported passing test results to licensees on 138 samples that failed test for yeast and mold. Scale also reported passing test results to licensees for nine samples that failed testing for Aspergillus, five samples that failed testing for E. coli, and one sample that failed testing for Salmonella. The lab did not use appropriate procedures or record keeping for testing for microbiological contamination, pesticides, or heavy metals. The lab also did not use appropriate quality control methods. They manipulated testing data and routinely deviated from its standard operating procedures. During OMMA's routine inspections and reviewing of records, it discovered results not accurately reported by the testing lab. OMMA issued a recall Thursday alerting 33 businesses, informing them of the 99 products included. The growers and processors that received the recall notice are required to inform dispensaries that bought the recalled products. The rules require dispensaries to contact patients who purchased the recalled products. Patients with questions about the recall should contact their dispensary. OMMA advises any patient in possession of a recalled product to return it to the dispensary. Researchers have found that the labels placed on marijuana in dispensaries is often highly misleading. After studying over 90,000 samples, a study published in the journal PLOS One is giving the nation a deeper look at what advocates and experts have been critical about with variety labeling for years. The study states, in addition to mapping the chemical landscape of commercial cannabis in the U.S., we also quantified how well commonly used industry labels align with the chemical composition of samples. In general, we found that the industry labels are poorly or inconsistently aligned with the underlying chemistry. When it came to assigning labels, the products in the study found that the labels of sativa, indica, and hybrid were overrepresented by specifically chemically defined groups. The study states that while commercial labels tended to have poor validity overall, they found evidence that certain names and categories were statistically overrepresented within specific chemically defined clusters. 
Cluster 3 samples, which were high in the terpenoline myrcene, displayed an overrepresentation of sativa labeled products, while certain, quote, strain names were overrepresented in clusters 1 and 2. Neither of these clusters displayed an overrepresentation of indica or sativa labels. Commercial products are routinely labeled indica hybrid and sativa. Prevailing folk theories assert that indica produces highly sedating effects and sativa energizing effects and hybrids intermediate effects. The results showed that even though the simplistic label system in which THC dominant samples are labeled by their dominant terpene is better at discriminating samples than the industry standard labeling system. A recent Journal of Safety Research study looked to find what is the likelihood that underage youth can obtain marijuana from licensed recreational marijuana outlets in California, a state where recreational marijuana is legal. The objective of the study was to assess just how easy access to marijuana by underage or youth patrons would be at a recreational marijuana outlet in California where recreational marijuana was legalized in 2016. The law in California states that anyone who provides cannabis to someone underage can face up to six months in jail and a maximum fine of $500 for the first offense. Just like TABC, the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission in Texas, police officers are allowed to use minors as assistance to test the compliance of the law in California. The results showed that anybody appearing to be an underage patron were required to show age identification to enter in 100% of licensed recreational marijuana outlets visited. The study noted that researchers found it surprising that there was 100% compliance with the ID policy to keep underage patrons from purchasing marijuana directly from licensed outlets. However, that was consistent with what was observed in two other states, Washington and Colorado. This indicates that youth use of marijuana isn't coming directly from the dispensary, but from another party that purchases the product, the same that states see with alcohol and tobacco use by minors. The study comes on the heels of hemp advocates in Texas pushing for age gating on the state hemp program to ensure that minors do not have easy access to products such as Delta 8 or current hemp derived Delta 9 products. Currently, the state of Texas does not have an age gate set for hemp products, but most hemp companies have already self-regulated themselves to a 21 and up system. I'm Jesse Williams, and that does it for this week of Cannabis Review News. To stay up to date, visit TXCanico.com or just search for Texas Cannabis Collective and search on our site to get updates. As well, search for Lone Star Collective to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite streaming service. Everybody have a great, wonderful, safe week and enjoy your Memorial Day weekend.